What were some of the environmental toxins that, you know, alarmed you in your early research? What, did you, what were you learning right away that you're like, oh, this could be a problem. This is, a, you know, and some of those things that have stayed with you that you feel like most people don't know about. Well, I feel like most people don't have environmental toxins on their radar, first, firstly. So that should be on the radar because when you look at NHANES data, so that's the biomonitoring data done by the CDC of toxicants in American blood levels, everybody has some sort of toxicants in their blood, right? So it's a ubiquitous problem. So why are doctors not looking for it, right? When patients come into the office, it should be, it should be part of standard um, kind of assessment, in my opinion. Um, so, but the 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 one that I was most focused on was mercury because I had my amalgams and I believed that that was um, a big part of contributing to, you know, my leaky gut, my symptoms of migraines, brain fog, fatigue, acne, because. You know, these environmental toxins, they don't just affect one organ system. They affect processes throughout your body. So, you know, it can affect, they can affect your hormones. They can affect your gut health, cause leaky gut. They can cause, um, a lot of them are neurotoxins. So they can directly damage your um, brain cells, your nerve cells. Um, and they go to like, you know, talk a bit about root cause. They, they actually damage the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse, the battery inside all of our cells. Right. And if you damage the battery inside the cell, that cell cannot function. It depends on where that cell is as to what your symptoms then manifest as. Right. So if it's a liver cell, you can't, you know, regulate your blood sugar properly. You, your cholesterol is also out of whack. If it's a, uh, cell in your ovary or in your testicles, then you have sex hormone disturbance, you your fertility might be affected. And so I think it's because it can hide under so many different symptoms. And the, the key is that it's so insidious, right? We're not exposed to huge amounts. The way we typically study toxicology is that we expose these lab animals to huge doses of uh, a, a substance. And then we watch for effects maybe for a day or two, um, you know, maybe at the most like a month or a few months, right? It's never followed up for 10 years, 20 years. And that's at the point at which we start to see problems because our bodies are so resilient. It's always trying to correct and make up for the mistakes and, and the bad things that we do to it, right? So it has that degree of give until the point where it's just like, okay, I've had enough, like I'm, I'm not taking anymore. And then that's when you get your diagnoses. So I think that it's, it's, a, it's a hidden problem that, you know, because you don't see that in immediate cause and effect, most people don't connect exposures with, you know, the downstream effects. Um, it's a, it's something that we need to kind of incorporate into our lifestyle now, I feel, given how much um, environmental toxins there are in our everyday lives, that so that we don't, we don't test the, the system. And, you know, our, I like to talk about environmental toxins as like a, a bathtub. So, you know, the explosions are coming in through the, the faucet. And as long as the drain is working properly, you, you don't, that bathtub never overfills, right? It's over, it's, only when it overfills that you start to get symptoms and diseases. So we need to make sure that whatever's coming in through the faucet is reduced and also that we have a clear drainage system, which is detoxification. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, why not subscribe? Here's a link to do that. And if you'd like to watch the full interview, you can find it at chrisbeatcancer.com. There's a link to it in the description right below this video.